Welcome to Transformations, straight talk about life, business, and spirituality. And I am really excited today because today I have the beautiful Kali T. Rawson. So welcome. I am so excited because today we're going to be talking about transformations and the beautiful children of Tibet. So welcome, Kali. Thank you so much, Carly, for having me today. Um, I'm really excited about this cause, and um, I'm really honored that you asked me to be on your show. So I'm going to defer it to you for right now because I'd love for you to tell me how you actually got involved in the Children of Tibet cause. You know, it's a really magical story. Um, first, it's not a long story, but I'll make a long story short, so to speak. Um, Facebook has been an amazing connection, meeting people from all over the world. So I met a director on Facebook, and he and I collaborated on a film about peace. And it doesn't seem like it's a, a film about peace, but when you watch it throughout, it's on YouTube, it's called The Locker's Heart. Um, what we did is my husband and I went to Tunisia right after the revolution to shoot this film. And when we got back, I had a gentleman named Stephen Chitry from Scotland, who's a PR person for um, the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan um, people. And he asked me if I would do a promotional piece, because I had been doing some um, little promotional pieces for friends that are artists and musicians. And he asked me to do a promotional piece for Tibetan children. And I said, absolutely, I'll do it. And then a few months later, after we had gotten to know each other, we had Skyped a few times, he, um, he asked me if I would like to be a children's ambassador for Tibet. And I said yes right away. Um, I got a little nervous. I was thinking, oh, I pray to God I can be a good role model and, um, and do what I can do for these children. And um, then I asked him, I said, why did you ask me to be a children's ambassador? And he said it was because I went to Tunisia. And um, at the time, when I went to Tunisia, so many people were like, oh my gosh, it's dangerous. You know, they're, I mean, you are you could be in danger. But I don't know, something inside me just told me I would be okay. And it was really important for me to do this film. And I wanted to go to a place, especially... Um, the place where we shot it in Gafsa, Tunisia, is where the revolution started. It was when there was a, a man with a cart outside. He was trying to sell items to feed his family, and the police came up to him and took away his cart because he didn't have a permit that day. He couldn't afford the permit. So he he put himself on fire. And it's called emolition, or emol... Do you know what it's called? Em um, emolution or emolution. It's when you uh, put yourself on fire. Oh, you yeah, know, when they actually pour gasoline on themselves and they blow themselves up. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. I don't know the exact term either, except I know what you're I, I know what you're talking about. I, I don't know the term either though. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's emolution or something like that. Well, that is what's happening with the Tibetan a lot of Tibetans because they want to go back to their country they're setting themselves on fire. So we want to get the message out there that there's a lot of children that are orphaned because their parents are not around anymore. And I don't want to say how they died. They're, they died somehow. And um, so we're putting on a benefit on November 16th here in Los Angeles called the Circle of Faith concert. And the um, executive director of Circle of Charities. I was introduced to Michael Maya of circleofcharities.org through Howie Wallfish. I was putting out, please, like, please help me um, put together this project. And um, so she has been an amazing woman. She has the venue. Um, she has the musical director. She's putting children together to sing. And I love how she put the project together because what she did was she was like, you know, Let's have the children of Los Angeles save the children of Tibet. Because, you know, here in Los Angeles, we have so much. You know, sometimes, you know, we don't have, you know, 
we don't drive Bentleys. But you know what? We have a lot. And I hope you can delete some of that. No. <laughs> no. Like, you know what I want you to share? I want you to share a little bit about the experience of the audition. When you were sharing with me about the old man, I mean not old man, you know what I'm saying, the older gentleman auditioning and he's actually um, going to be singing. You have to share some of the stories of the audition because that just really touched my heart. I think that was so amazing. Well, I, t I took some video footage. Um, there were some auditions for the Circle of Faith concert and we wanted to be about uh, children of all ages. You know, not just young children but older children. So a gentleman came in. I don't know how old he was, but he was between 60 and 70 years old and he auditioned. And he is a brilliant musician. So he'll be there. Um, we have about 20 performers, young, old, and I don't want to say old because they're children of all ages. And um, Young at heart. How about that? Yeah, young at heart. So we just have so much here in the United States, and we just want to give back. So Michael has a children's charity called Circle of Arts as well, and she provides art supplies and she has a um, music studio and she teaches children how to produce music and give back and it's just a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to get that in there because I think that's so beautiful. I think we forget sometimes, doesn't matter how old we are, like you know as you, we were talking about my birthdays tomorrow, doesn't matter if you're 49, if you're 50, if you're 70, if you're 20, if you're 5. It's yeah. just like being, playing. Playing is such an important thing, and you, being in that spirit of play and in your heart. So I really wanted to get that in about the older gentleman singing, because I think that's so beautiful that you're allowing him to sing and with a group of younger people, and and that and that you also have a diversified, you know, singing group that is not just children singing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just so beautiful. So I really wanted to make sure we got that in there, because I was really touched when you told me that the other day. Um, it's really going to be soulful. And there's going to be a song that um, Michael has written that we'll all sing at the very end. And it's, it's, I'm really excited. <laughs> Let's talk about, you were talking about earlier when I, when I was talking about transformations and you were saying that that has brought you to where you are today. So let's talk about a little bit about you, Kali, and how you yourself has used transformation in your life. So how has transformation and change brought you to where you are and, and projects that you've chosen to work on in your life? Well, I've always had visions of helping people my whole life. And this is where it started. I, I remember that commercial, and I'll talk about how it transformed me in just a second. Before I started taking transformational classes, um, I had there was a commercial when I was a young child. Remember that Indian rowing down the river and seeing all this garbage? and he had a tear in his eye and that really impacted me and I started recycling at the time right after I saw that commercial and then when I was in fifth grade I remember someone bringing groceries to our doorstep with no note and I thought to myself you know I really want to be the kind of person that does something for, for people in the world like that and so those two instances in my childhood those were little seeds so when I was about 25 years old, I started doing transformational work. My very first course was through Landmark Education. And it really impacted me. I, I'm a dental hygienist too. So the dentist that I was working for, Shelly Canada, invited me to her um, course to find out what it was. So I'm sitting in her course called Self-Expression and Leadership. And I see all these people in the course um, describing the projects that they're doing in the world. Like one woman was um, feeding the Houston um, homeless children and she had a We Care project. And then another woman stood up and shared that she was building 15 homes for underprivileged people and she got the land donated and the supplies donated. And I'm sitting in the chair just thinking, wow, I really want to be that kind of person. So, um, so I took the courses and um, I did my very first charity event in Dallas, Texas and it was called Passion and Partnership Events and I really got a sense of like people coming together because people just want to give and and if they're not giving they want to know of a way they can give and if they're and sometimes people don't even know that their gifts matter 
So that's what transformation is all about. When I took these transformational classes, I really got that I was a gift in the world, and I wanted to share that. And so I would not be here today without the work that I've done through Landmark Education, WorldWorks trainings, um, Kaya Redford's NLP um, success coaching. Um, I just continue to do transformational work because it keeps bringing me to a whole new level. And um, last year when I was taking leadership training through WorldWorks, I w that's when I was invited to meet the Dalai Lama. Um, it was, I'll never remember, I mean, I'll never forget that day. Um, it was Earth Day, and I didn't even know it was Earth Day until I arrived to the hotel, and there were people everywhere just in reverence to this man who epitomizes peace in the world. You know, he's gone through so much trauma, and, you know, I feel like he is a, a role model for me because... You know, I've been through a lot of trauma myself, and I think everyone has their story of trauma. You know, some are more extreme than the others, but we all have had some sort of trauma in our life, and we can transform that trauma and give back, maybe even to the people that we associate with that have had the same type of trauma, and it's just a beautiful thing to transform. And... Um, what kind of transformational work have you done? Oh my God, um, I I worked with all sorts of transformational leaders. I worked with uh, Christopher Howard, T. Harv Ecker. I've done a lot of Mark Victor Hansen's work. Um, I mean, I've just so so many different things. I've done stuff with um, Doreen Virtue, um, Barbara DeAngelis. I've done a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I've been doing so. I mean, literally, I've dived into a lot of it since nineteen. I don't know, in the 1990s. But what I want to touch back on it before I get into anything I've done, because this is really about you and um, mm -hmm. a lot of things that you've worked on. Um, one of the things I love about the Dalai Lama is his sense of humor. I mean, mm -hmm. he, I love his laughter and that he's willing to laugh not just at himself but at the, you know, the world and just, you know, anything. I mean, I love his sense of humor. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, 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 you must have seen that, his sense of humor and his... <laughs> His laughter is just is just beyond amazing, and there's one more thing I want to touch upon before I forget. Um, is the, the giving part? A lot of people have this view: is if we give, we're going to get taken advantage of. What do you think about that statement? Well, I feel like if you're thinking you're going to be taken advantage of, it's because you want something. So when you give, you really, for me, I've learned that when I'm giving, and I'm just giving. But I'm a human. Sometimes I expect back, and that's when I get an upset. So if we have expectations and they're not fulfilled, then we have an upset. But giving, you know, you, you get what you give. And I just have found that in life, giving, like forgiving, forgiving is a gift that you truly give yourself. So anybody that's ever taken advantage of you or me or... You just forgive them because whatever journey that they're on and they had to take advantage of, they were in survival mode and they felt like they needed to needed to have that. So I feel like the world is just flowing and we just, because I, I mean I've had many instances where I've been so-called taken advantage of, but I feel like it's part of life and I've let it go and What's so cool about upsets, I was talking to someone the other day about upsets. Whenever I get upset, I look at my watch and I give myself a certain amount of time. And I learned this through the Sedona method. You just give yourself specific time because you gotta let it out. You know, we're we're emotional beings. You know, when something happens to us, we've gotta let it out. And through transformational work. I've learned to do it in a very graceful manner because I used to be a wreck. Like when I would get upset, I would just have verbal diarrhea, you know. So through transformation, I've learned to, you know, not react so quickly. And it's helped me so much. And I feel like that's why I'm where I am today too. Maybe it's taken me a little longer than most people to, you know, be wherever I am. But I feel like I'm in the perfect place. And whatever I'm giving and receiving is perfect. So you said something that's really important right there. 
I think as human beings, we need to learn to respond versus react. Yeah. We, and too many times when we're in a situation, we immediately react. We don't literally take the time to step back and just be with something and feel it and then respond. So I, I like that. And I think we also need to honor how we feel. So like you said, having that, it's almost like having a timeout. Take the time to have the time, like almost like when we're, we put our children in a timeout. The purpose of a timeout is to allow ourselves to actually honor what we're feeling, let ourselves feel it and process it, and then go back and then respond. Instead yeah. of going into that emotional raw feeling and acting out and reacting. Mm -hmm. So I like that. We, we do need to allow, we are those emotional be beings. We do have feelings and we are going to want to react. And instead, allow your, allow your body to feel it, give yourself that time to feel it, and in a, in a weird way, we're actually mourning that. So whatever we're feeling, we need to allow ourselves just to mourn it, get over it, and, and that's what we're actually doing. And then, okay, stand up, and then respond, or just let it go. Mm -hmm. how yeah. do, I mean, is that, is that just, how does that feel? It feels great because, you know, we're as humans we sometimes we want to be right no all the time we want to be right <laughs> so in a situation where you want to be right uh oh sometimes things get heated like you said give yourself a timeout give the other person a timeout take a walk be with nature and you know I feel like with communication anything is possible I think that we can have peace in this world in our lifetime and I believe that if each person bees responsible, not takes responsibility, but be responsible for what we're causing, and instead of pointing the finger and blaming others, oh, you know, I, and I'm not saying that someone else is not at fault. <laughs> you know, some things happen. And, but if you just be responsible, because maybe sometimes an attitude that I might have had caused that person to be a certain way. So I'm learning how to be responsible for everything in my life. All the messes, all the amazing things, but not like getting too down or too up. And that's what I love about the Dalai Lama's uh, philosophy is that middle way of not being too excited or too down like do your best to stay in that peaceful state and because I mean if you've seen some interviews with me in the past I mean I got so excited they'd be like ah you know and I'm learning you know just bring it down a little bit Callie <laughs> and just have some peace and forgive and especially forgive myself you know, I think people forget to forgive themselves a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. I think we as humans, it's natural to beat ourselves up. We're so harsh on ourselves. We're so judgmental on ourselves. I think we're more judgmental on ourselves than we are of others. We're yeah. the we're just so critical of ourselves. We're just mm -hmm. that's I think you know I think we we unfortunately we also do judge others, um, and I think that's just our nature in general. And I think the the more we learn to not judge others. I think we'll also learn not to judge ourselves. I think that's a, that's a big one. I'd also love for you to share more with others about who you are. I don't think a lot of people realize, because we didn't really get into that, that you're also an actress, and that's, you mentioned that you, you, know, you do do dental hygiene work, but I'd love for people to know a little bit you know, about who you really are, um, because you actually have done some amazing work in, in, uh, in the entertainment world. So why don't you share a little bit with everyone so everyone knows that you, know, you do do that. So let's, let's give a little preview of who is... Callie. <laughs> well, Callie Rawson is a girl who's passionate about a lot of things. And I'm getting emotional just sit, thinking about it. But I've been blessed. Um, I became a dental hygienist early in my days, but I've always been an artist and someone that wants to give back ever since I can remember. So I'm blessed with that job right now. But my passion is the arts. I love to act. I like to collaborate with people and make projects, filmmaking, um, stage productions, events to give back, 
Um, I'm also a painter. Um, I started playing the guitar when I broke my arm. And I feel like music, when I sing, there's something about music that really opens my heart. And I've been reluctant to share that side of me because um, yeah, I'm so I'm transforming as we're speaking <laughs> here. So um, I'm um, I have so many areas of my life that are just dedicated to art. And thank you for asking that. No, it's like yeah, I always find I never like to start interviews with that because then it's kind of like well. You know, it's like, okay, that's who this person is. But it's kind of like, you know, storytelling. Because the whole purpose initially of this interview was to talk about the children of Tibet. And then as like as we evolved and we were talking about transformations, I want people to get a sense of, you know, who you were. And and, and, she, cause, and I know you, as I've followed you for a while now, is that I my sense of you is that you're a beautiful soul. And I can always tell that, you know, you do care about people that, you know, I can see beyond the charities. I mean, I already knew that you cared about people because you do do a lot of charity work. However, I could also tell through your acting, and I always can tell an authentic actress that you had a beautiful soul and a beautiful heart. So I wanted people to get a sense, and I could tell in allowing you to share a view that that would come out, which it did. So thank you so much for sharing that of you. Oh, thank you. Sometimes, you know, being an actor, people think you're not shy. And when <laughs> people meet me, they don't think I'm shy. But... There are moments when I'm shy, like I said, in the music area. I don't know what it is. It's so, it's like my heart is like wide open, and it scares me, you know? Not that I think people are going to take advantage of me, but that, you know, crying in public is like people are, I don't know, we're taught not to cry, you know? I don't know what that is. Um, but... When I feel, it's not that I'm sad when I cry. Sometimes I'm so filled with joy and so filled with love that I just start crying. And it's not that I'm sad. It's that I'm filled with... Um, Emotion. Yeah, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the difference that I can possibly make. The visions that um, I've been given. Like, Save the Children of Tibet... I would like to save the children of the world. And I'm not even just talking about children. I'm talking about people. Because people forget we're all children. And that brings me up. I, I really would like to thank a few people that have really helped me with the Save the Children of Tibet project. One, for one, Stephen Shetrid from Scotland, who actually invited me to do this project. I mean, without him asking me to do this, this wouldn't be, we wouldn't be discussing and then San Bui, who's in Canada, who's been a really inspirational support for me, you know, helping me go along and supporting me in, through all the rejections that I've had up until this point to get this project done. And, um, and Lama Kinsor, who is from Canada, but he has um, a um, monastery here in Westminster. His name is Lama Kinsor Lop Singh. And... Um, He's the one that's building the orphanage in India. He's in charge of it. It's called the Sarame Hob Hor Kamsen Project. And then I met some amazing women over the last month, Angela Bowie and Sharice Ford, who have, are of um, this project called Trophy Models. And you, it's not considered, like, when you hear trophy model, you get this image in your head. But it's really about model citizens. So everybody is a trophy model. And when I got that, it, that was like so cool, you know, trophy models. And then um, Dina Kimmel, she owns We Rock the Spectrum, and she's donating a gift basket. She has um, gyms all over, all over here. Ten franchises of um, gyms for all children, especially autistic children. Mm -hmm. And um, um, two people have donated jewelry. From their lines, Cynthia Desser Albu and um, Donna Poo from Betty's Belts, and her website is madewithintegrity.com, and um, just an outpour of love and support, and especially of women. 
and I wanted to discuss that. You know, you know how some women think women are catty or women aren't supportive, but I really want people to get out there that women are among the most supportive people on the planet, and they just want to give back. Women and women coming together has been a blessing, a miracle in this project, really. So well, I want. I, I think on that thinking. What I want to say to that though is I think as a culture, women can get very tribal. Mm -hmm. Women will come together and band, and, and that's I think a, a tribal culture, and especially overseas, by the way, because that is a tribal culture. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they live together. You know, the moms, grandmothers, aunts, aunties. You know, that type of. It's a very tribal culture. And I think women associations you'll find a lot more here in the United States now you see a lot of women organizations coming together women's groups coming together business groups you know that type of thing so you'll see that more and more in the United States starting to form yeah I, I want to transform that conversation you know women help women everywhere and um, I feel like because women give birth and I, I feel like I mean, men are powerful too. I'm not saying that they're not, but there's something about us women that we need to rise up and be responsible for what is happening in this planet. And we need to protect our planet. And that's why my website, and I'm starting to brand myself as the POW girl, because POW means protect our world. Like we need to really protect our world, starting in your home. You know, protect your world in your home and then protect the world in this in your town and then in the city and then in the state and then in the world and then I, it just goes on and on like that so um, I want to create POW people <laughs> POW tribe yeah POW tribe there mm -hmm. you go and, and you it, know the, the POW yeah. actually is a word that gets used a lot in tribal and tribal yeah, language wow. yeah so do you know um, more about anything about powwow? Have you been to a powwow? Actually, eons ago, yes. I have not, and I would love to go to one. Love it. I would love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really I, I'm really excited about the work that you're doing, and I'm just really delighted that we finally got to have this conversation. And thank you for your patience and rescheduling. And um, I'm just really, just really happy that we finally got to have this conversation. You are a blessing in this world, and I'm really excited that you're building this tribe of of POW women. And I'm really excited that there's a tribe being created of POW women everywhere. And I know that this uh, this thing will be a success. I'm really excited that we're putting out the word of the Circle of Charities and the Circle of Faith Concert I know will be a success and now now that I know that you're involved and um, I'm sure it'll be a major success and we will you know sharing it everywhere so that'll be wonderful and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to putting this together for you and sharing it everywhere thank you and I wanted to shout out to Reverend Pickens of the Zion Church that we're having it at he donated the space for this event and Without him, we would not be having this event. Um, Is there anything else that you'd love to share with the audience? Hmm. Go within or go without. Ooh, yes. I love that phrase, and I love it on your picture that I actually put in the graphic. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful phrase. I love it. So I mean, everybody usually knows I put together a wonderful page that will have everything on it. Also, by the way, since this is also a podcast, can you actually share with everybody in spelling out the website where they can go? Yes. Save Children Tibet. S A V E C H I L D R E N T I B E T. That's Save Children Tibet.com. Thank you so much. And thank you all for listening or watching wherever you are. Thank you so much. And, um, I'm looking forward to peace in this world in our lifetime. I know it's I know it's possible. And I look forward to everyone's feedback and it's good night for today. However, I will be with you next week. Thank you everybody for sharing time with us. Blessings to everybody and I look forward to being with you guys again. Thank you everybody. <laughs>